In the basics video, we saw how to get accurate segments with both the conventional and the wedgie sled. Each method has its virtues. And we'll use whichever works best for what we need to do. We're not going to rule out anything. We're going to start out with this ring. It looks pretty haphazard, but it really isn't. It embodies several segment types. Of course, for it to go together perfectly the first time, there can be no guesswork. When you add a second fence and then separate them the exact degree of the segment that you want, something interesting happens. We still cut segments the way we did before by flipping the strip like this. But what we do is we cut half of the segments on one fence and the other half of the segments we cut with the other fence like so. And guess what happens? When you combine a segment cut with one fence with the segment cut with the other fence, they form the perfect segment angle that we're after. I refer to segments cut in this manner as complementary segments because they go together to accomplish our goal. Now what I do is I label the uh, segments cut with the lower fence, they're what I call primary segments, I label those with a P, and the ones cut with the upper fence, I label them with a C for complementary segments. Now, a big advantage of uh, complementary segments is because we're cutting them with two different fences, uh, we can make them different lengths uh, from one to the other, and we can also use two different woods. And that's what we did with this ring, is if you notice the angle for the P segment is very sharp, and the angle for the C complementary segment is very wide, but they still go together perfectly, and the sled takes care of that for you. In making rings that are uh, have tapered segments, the complementary segment is absolutely essential for getting perfect rings. Isn't that cool? As we actually make this ring with all of its uh, other segments and everything, I'll be breaking in from time to time to give you an illustration as to exactly what's going on with the segments and how easy it is to do. Now assembling the ring, you can see that the segments are totally different, but when they combine, then they form the degrees for two segments. And so what you end up with is when you put it together, uh, they make a perfect ring. See, that looks pretty good. Straight segments are really an easy way to add interest to any ring. The sides are parallel, so they do not add angularly to the ring. And it's easy to do. All you have to do is just pick the fence for the segment type that you want, and then just proceed to cut uh, however many you need to the width that you want. And you can make them very thin, or you can make them thick, whatever you like. 
Straight segments cut in this fashion will fit perfectly the segment type that you choose. We're going to intersperse these by putting one on each side of the primary segment, like so. And what I do is I turn every other one over. And you can see with a very simple setup, uh, we have a pretty, pretty good looking ring here. Another type of uh, accent segment is called a complementary pair. And the way you do a complementary pair uh, is you set a single fence off center just a little bit where it's not 90 degrees, and you cut your segments by flipping the strip, so on and so on. And what you end up with is when you put them together, they go together like that, but you have an angle between them. And when you put them on either side of a segment, the angle on the outside, including the uh, complementary pair, is the same th angle as the segment. So it does not add angularly to the ring, but it adds a lot of interest because it's off-center. We're going to add these to each side of the complementary segment and we're going to 
uh, put one in one way and the other in the other way so they'll end up uh, doing what we want them to do. Okay. Now the big question is, can I get the rubber band around it? Everything fits just fine. This video series is about making accurate segments and doing it every time. At the beginning of the video, I told you that we should be able to depend on our process to where we don't have to make test cuts or test rings and that sort of thing. And I'm sure that sounded pretty outrageous to you. So what that really means is that the segments that we cut and put these rings together should be totally interchangeable. Uh, the, the segments that we cut today should fit within a ring we cut a year ago, a month ago, or whatever, if it's accurate. So what we have done is first we made uh, a couple of rings, one with a conventional sled and one with the wedgie sled. This is the wedgie sled uh, ring. It's more accurate. And then I made a, a couple of rings to demonstrate what happens when you skew uh, the segments over, make them look spiral or whatever. Then we made this crazy ring that has complementary segments and st straight segments and that sort of thing. Now, if what I said is true uh, about the methodology we need, then we should be able to take segments out of any of these and put them in any of the others and it should work just fine, including when you have complementary segments as we do in this ring, you should be able to replace the complementary segments with any of these and it should fit. I've taken the rubber bands off of these, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the most interesting one first, and that's the complementary segments. Uh, if you recall, a primary and a complementary is equal to two segments. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take segments out of this ring. And we're going to replace them with complementary segments like this. And guess what? It fits perfect. If that's the case, then we should be able to take the segments we took out of that and put in this and they should fit also. This is a little bit bigger and a little more unwieldy and it fits. Is that cool? Now these, you should be able to take these and put them in. We'll take uh, one out here and put here like this. Of course that fits. How about one that's skewed? We'll do the same here. Like so. Wow, it fits. So we should be able to put these back over here 
like so and I'm I'm making it symmetrical because the different segment widths can make things seem a little unruly uh oh what happened see I have to take out two more how about that isn't that cool so we take these slanted segments and we take them over here and put them in this one. And they fit. How about uh, taking a couple of these from here and a couple from over here. I'm a little fumble-fingered, and we'll do the same thing. We'll put one there, and we'll leave the one here, one here, like so. Well, look at that. It fits. We should be able to take these and put in here. And put it together. And it fits. This shows that our process works. Now the trick is getting the rubber band on it. May or may not be successful here. A little ugly, but we did it. And it fit with that one. Okay, I added a little bit more rubber bands on it. Now, and you can see it, the joints a lot better if I turn it over because of the shadows. It looked pretty good. Well, we know our method works, works very well, but we're going to tilt the blade and it's a brand new ball game.